on a quest to get my first platinum trophy, and today I'm gonna try to get it by becoming a true deviant in. Now, Detroit Become Human was released in May of 2018, and it's a game I still remember seeing and hearing about when it launched because of its graphics alone. But since I didn't have a PlayStation, I never actually got to play it. So I figured that late is better than never and looked up the game's trophies before I got started. And I won't lie, when I looked at the game's trophies, I was kind of shocked to find out that only 1.5% of players had the platinum for this game. That was until I pulled up the trophy guide for the game over on PSN profiles, and then it was pretty easy to see why. 44 out of the 49 trophies in this game are actually missable. What the fuck? We get our first chance at a couple trophies in chapter one, where we get to play as Connor, the android sent by Cyberlife, whose sole purpose is to track down deviants, which are basically androids who become self-aware, and destroy them. Which is perfect because we immediately get thrown into a hostage situation where a deviant's taking a little girl hostage on top of an apartment building. So I use my detective skills and Connor's sweet android abilities to investigate the situation only to find out that the android appears to have snapped after realizing that his owner was intent on replacing him with a newer model. And armed with that info, I approach the android on the rooftop and convince him to let the little girl go and promise that nothing's going to happen to him. But as soon as he lets the little girl go, the SWAT team decides to take control of the situation. He just got fucked up. Oh, God. Then we get introduced to Kara, an android who's being picked up from the repair store by her owner after she had a car accident. And this is her owner, Todd. And I'm just gonna say, Todd, I don't believe a damn thing you're saying right now. But anyways, after Todd picks us up, he takes us back to the house and tells us to clean up the place and that we're in charge of looking after his daughter, Alice. So I do as he says until he gets pissed that I find his drug stash in the laundry room. Red ice, acetone, lithium, terium, clean hydrochloric acid. You shouldn't mess around with my stuff. You left it in the fucking ass. soap, bro. I'm sorry, Todd. You just stay the fuck out of my business. Unless you want to piss me off. You want to piss me off? No, Todd. Which shook my nerves a little bit, so I decided to head upstairs to do some cleaning and make friends with his daughter, Alice, who, in return, gives me a key to the chest on top of her dresser, where I see some disturbing pictures of the reality of Alice's life here and how I ended up in the repair shop for another trophy. And then I gotta meet the last playable character in the game, Dr. Avery, I mean, Marcus. God, I gotta quit watching Grey's Anatomy who is actually out on an errand for his owner to pick up some paint from the store. But on my way back to the bus stop, I get harassed by some humans who are pissed off at all of us androids because they took our jobs. Yeah, they're down. They're they're down. Down. But lucky for me, a nice police officer breaks things up and sends me on my way so I can get the paint back to my owner, Carl, who's a famous painter in his own right, who actually gives me a chance to paint my first masterpiece from my own imagination, which turned out pretty fucking awesome if I do say so myself, but the moment gets spoiled by his crackhead son who comes in and ruins all the fun because he needs some more drug money. Of course, Carl already gave him some money, so he tells him no. So in return, his son Leo throws a temper tantrum and directs all his anger out at me before the chapter ends. Later that night though, as Connor, we get to go meet our new human partner, Hank. And now Hank, you know, has a bit of a drinking problem, but we need to get to a crime scene right now. So rather than shitting all over his drinking problem, I buy him one for the road and we get on our way. And when we get to the crime scene, it's an absolute shithole. I mean, it looks like the victims must be friends with Todd or something. But it appears Todd's friend must have messed with the wrong guy because he was stabbed 28 frickin' times. Ah, no! So using Connor's detective abilities, we sweep the area and determine that what happened here was that the victim actually tried to destroy his own android with a bat, and the android decided to fight back. Which leaves only one question, where did the android go? Well, it turns out that the android's still hanging out in the house and hiding in the attic, where I find him and he tries to convince me to be quiet and just to let him go, but I decide to narc his ass out to Hank instead for another trophy. Back at Todd's house, I serve him and Al some dinner before he goes on some drug-induced rant. You should stop taking drugs, Todd. Sometimes you really scare me, Todd. And sends Alice running to her room before yelling at me not to move, where he then goes over and takes a rip off his crack pipe and he takes his belt off to head upstairs to beat Alice with it. And I wasn't gonna have that shit, so I snapped and became a deviant myself, only to get choked out by Todd and tossed on the floor. 
Before getting back up and running up into Todd's room to grab the gun out of his nightstand that I found while I was cleaning and having my very own cage match with him in Alice's room. Jesus Christ. You do as I say. Oh shit. And with Todd down for the count, I grab Alice and sprint out of the house for another trophy. As Marcus, we're just coming home from a night out with Carl where we find his studio lights on and his son Leo inside stealing Carl's paintings to sell for more drugs. And it's pretty clear that Leo blames us for being way cooler than he is and that because Carl loves us more, obviously. So things escalate and Carl asks us to do nothing regardless of what Leo does, which I don't actually want to do, but I need to do it for a trophy. So I let Leo talk all the shit he wants, but it ends up killing Carl in front of me just before the police show up. So this never would have happened if it weren't for you. The android. Who's the android? Oh, I just got fucked up. Back at NYPD headquarters with Connor, though, we're interrogating the deviant that we found in the crack house, and your boy is a master at reading body language. And of course, hacking deviant memory. So it wasn't long before we managed to get him to confess for another trophy. However, Kara and Alice have finally reached the end of the line, so we have to hop off the bus and try to figure out what our next move is, before a friendly android gives us some contact info for someone who can help us get out of Detroit. However, we need to find a new disguise and somewhere to sleep for the night, so we head down to the local laundromat and steal some clothes from a guy there, and go hide out inside this abandoned car, so we don't have to spend the night out on the streets. As Marcus, we wake up with one hell of a headache, and a bit more damage to the rest of our body than we expected in a junkyard full of dead and or dying androids. So we crawl through the mud trying to piece ourselves back together when suddenly an android grabs us. I knew it. Making a quick mental note of this supposed android safe haven, we get through the rest of the junkyard piecing ourselves back together and take off. The following day at NYPD headquarters, though, we show up early before Hank gets there so we can do the thing that all of us would do in this situation, snooping through all of Hank's shit. And we're not doing it to be an asshole necessarily, but we're doing it because we need a trophy at the end of the chapter for doing so. But eventually Hank does show up and we have to go talk with the captain who tells Hank he's going to be dealing with all the deviant cases from now on. And Hank is not happy about it. Why me? Why do I got to be the one to deal with this shit? But after leaving the captain's office, I jump on the computer and make some small talk with Hank before another officer drops by saying they have a lead on a deviant who killed a man last night. Kara and Alice wake up in an abandoned car only to find out that Hank and Connor are hot on our trail. So we have to try to sneak by them and all the police officers combing the street for us, which I failed at pretty miserably, I'll have to admit. So Connor ends up chasing us all the way down an alley only to narrowly escape from him for another trophy. As Marcus, we though, we start tracking down the clues given to us by the android in the scrapyard and slowly use them to make our way to Jericho, which appears to be just an empty old cargo ship, but it is actually a place of refuge for a bunch of deviant androids, which is cool and stuff, but in the meantime, I end up getting in a foot chase as Connor with another deviant on some rooftops, where Hank tries to help us out by cutting him off, only to get almost thrown off the building, so I decide to ignore my programming here as an android and save Hank and let the Deviant go for a trophy. Back on the Jericho though, I meet up with all the other androids and hatch a plan to steal android parts from the docks in Detroit so we can piece all of us back together properly, right? But while we're trying to steal everything, we make a new friend and end up sneaking into the guard shack to sabotage the facility's security plan so we can actually steal a key to a delivery truck and make off with a boatload of parts for another trophy. Then Kara and Alice finally reach the address that was given to them back when they got off the bus and are greeted by this fellow named Zlatko who turns out to be a giant piece of shit and in turn locks us in the basement and wipes our memory. But after the wipe on our way upstairs, we meet some of the creations Zlatko has made before heading upstairs and snapping out of our stupor and grabbing Alice and making a run for it. And we actually manage to get it outside before Zlatko catches up with us and it all seems lost. 
I mean, like, where else are we going to go, right? But lucky for us, Luther here is a big softy, and he becomes a deviant himself when he sees us trying to protect Alice. So with his help, we're able to get the hell out of there, not only with our lives, but with a new plan to try to head north and cross the Canadian border. Meanwhile, the android sent by Cyberlife gets a tip on a new crime scene at the Eden Club where it appears a deviant has killed one of the Johns who frequents this very classy adult entertainment center. At the crime scene, we end up reviving a damaged android who tells us there's actually two androids present in the room when us all went down and that the deviant that killed the man is probably still in the building. So we snag Hank's credit card and start swiping. This is not going to look good on my expense account. So we can track down the Deviant from the memory of all the other androids in the building, which works out, but ends with us in a back alley brawl between two OnlyFans girls. But despite the brawl, they tell me their story and it's so moving that I begin questioning whether or not I'm a human or an android, so I do the right thing and let them go free for another trophy. Now, Kara, Alice, and Luther are in Zlatko's stolen car and are heading to meet someone Luther thinks can help them get across the border. But the car breaks down along the way, so we're forced to take shelter in what looks like an abandoned theme park. But it turns out it's not actually abandoned, but it's filled with a bunch of androids known as Jerry's. Yes, Jerry's. I, I don't know why they would pick the name Jerry. But that's besides the point because the Jerry's turned out to be friendly. So friendly, in fact, that they decide to start up a merry-go-round for Alice so we can take a ride on it for another trophy. Hey. Marcus and the team decide to infiltrate the news station's headquarters in downtown Detroit, where unfortunately Simon manages to get shot in the process before we put out a broadcast demanding the freedom for all of the androids, our civil rights, and the right to reproduce. After the broadcast is over though, we head to the roof to make our getaway, but are forced to leave Simon behind because of his injuries before making a getaway that even Tom Cruise would be a fan of. Getting back to our job as a deviant hunter though, we start looking for some clues at the news station after the attack where I manage to track down Simon hiding out on the roof. However, Simon comes out swinging and I take a bullet before I manage to connect with Simon and get a glimpse of Jericho before he unalives himself for another trophy. Hey, now this is where my first playthrough actually went off the rails, you see, because Simon actually needs to survive this encounter until the end of the game to unlock the survivor's trophy. But I didn't know that, so I just kept playing on with the game. So I'm gonna have to come back to this chapter again later. But anyways, the next day Kara and crew end up at Rose's house, a woman who has been helping androids successfully cross the Canadian border without being detected. And after a bit of convincing, she decides to leave the house to go sort out the details for us to get us across. Of course, by this time though, the police have found Zlatko's car on the side of the road and the police officer shows up asking questions. And while he's asking questions, I managed to hide all the evidence of androids in the house for another trophy. So after a quick look around, he heads on his way before Rose shows back up, letting us know everything is on track to cross the border tonight for another trophy. Fuck the police, man. Now Marcus and the Jericho crew have decided enough is enough. So we head down to the local cyber life store and break all of our fellow androids free while groups of other Jericho androids hit a bunch of the other stores around town and do the same thing. And of course, after breaking them out, I decided it's time to have a little bit of a riot. But for this playthrough, it's going to be a peaceful riot, if you will. So instead of destroying the neighborhood, we just post a bunch of our own symbols of peace around the area until the cops show up and actually kill a few of us. Of course, I wasn't there when this actually happened, so I eventually crash up to the group who have taken the cop hostage and hand us a gun to deal out some justice. But like I said, this is a peaceful protest, right? So instead of condemning the man, we take the higher road and let him live with his mistake for a trophy. Oh, fuck these dudes. Connor and Hank decide to give Kamsky, the man who founded Cyberlife and created the first android, in hopes that he might have some information that will help us figure out what is causing androids to become deviants. Of course, being this smart of a guy, he's kind of a fucking wacko, right? So Kamsky decides to give us his test to see if we can feel empathy or not. And that test requires us to shoot another android right in front of him. And since I'm playing as a pacifist and I don't want to upset Hank either, I decide not to shoot her and he does not give us the information we're looking for. But in return, we do get a trophy. Of course, when all this is going on, Marcus and his crew decide to hold a civil rights protest by marching down the street in unison, chanting for freedom for all the androids before the police show up telling us to disperse before they open fire. 
Now a girl north here next to us tries to convince us to stand our ground and we're attacked by the police and I end up getting shot. But it just seems like Marcus's story is about to come to an end. Our friend that we made back at the dock shows up and sacrifices himself so I can escape to fight another day for a trophy. Back at NYPD headquarters, Connor and Hank get told that they're being pulled off the deviant cases because of what happened at the news station so that the FBI can take over. Can't live with the situation though, so I convince Hank to give us his key to the evidence room and provide a distraction to buy us some time. Perkins, you fucking <laughs> he's, he's just going in. Sumo. Eccentric police lieutenant Sumo. Fucking password. <laughs> and then go over all the evidence before tricking Simon to, into giving me the location of Jericho by impersonating Marcus for a trophy and knock out one of the android hating detectives who shows up the last minute trying to stop me. Hey. Then later that night, instead of Rose taking us to the border, she actually ends up dropping us off near the Jericho where we can try to find some more help because since Marcus has marched downtown, the entire city is on lockdown and they're hunting down deviants. So we make our way under the ship and meet up with Marcus who agrees to put us in touch with another android on the ship who can make us some good passports before heading out to catch the last bus out of town. Which is great and all, but as I'm heading back to Luther and Alice to let them know what's going on, I get one hell of a shock. Alice is an android. No. No. What? You knew from the beginning. Oh, I'm so upset. You just didn't want to see it. She wanted a mom. Oh. You wanted someone to care for. You needed each other. Oh. What difference does it make? Oh, that's heart wrenching. Do you love her any less now that you know she's one of us? Oh. Alice loves you, Kara. She loves you more than anything in the world. I don't even know what to say. She became the little girl you wanted. And you became the mother she needed. What Getting the fuck? To become what someone needs you to be. Maybe that's what it means to be alive. And yeah, if you can't tell, I was actually pretty shocked while this was going on, but we gotta keep going with the story. You see, because just at that same time, we show up as Connor where we start eavesdropping on Marcus for a bit and confront him and the truth of our situation where we end up becoming a deviant ourselves for a trophy. But of course, on cue, the FBI shows up to raid the ship, forcing us to run for our lives as Kara, where we get separated from Luther and manage to trick the SWAT team by playing dead till they leave and we can sneak away. Then back on the ship though, Marcus and the team are fighting off some of the SWAT members so they can blow up the ship to give everybody a chance to escape for a couple of more trophies. We're all uh, sweet. Ooh. Oh shit. Then Karen and Alice manage to find Luther on their way to the border and make it across without any issues. And at the same time, Connor's actually breaking into the CyberLife storage facility and converts all the androids into deviants so he can go back up Marcus, who's having a peaceful protest outside the android concentration camp. However, before Connor can show up with backup, the humans start attacking all the androids outside the camp. And just when things are almost all but lost, I decide to grab North in my arms and give her a big old smooch for the cameras to win over the hearts of the humans and the leader of the country and win our freedom. And by winning our freedom, I also complete my first playthrough of the game and unlock eight more trophies. Now with that first playthrough out of the way, I needed to go back and try to do some cleanup as a pacifist, not only because I, you know, let Simon die, but because there's some other trophies that I can only get as a, during a pacifist playthrough, right? So like one of them being that Karen and Alice have to stay in the motel room instead of the abandoned car. And then getting back through the entire news station thing with Simon alive. Not to mention finishing the entire second half of the game again to unlock the survivor trophy. 
And then I had to go back again, this time to where we're on the Jericho with Kara and Alice. And instead of playing dead, I have to surrender so I can get captured and thrown into the concentration cramp itself so I can escape it for a trophy. Before I can finally move on with another playthrough where I have to be a complete psychopath, right? I'm not gonna through, go through every single trophy that you do on the psychopath playthrough, but the biggest one that I, I just can't get over is like, when you're playing as Connor, you can actually die like eight times and come back. And you have to do that for a trophy, right? But every time you do it, it makes Hank lose more faith in humanity and androids as a whole, which leads to probably the saddest moment in the game. Leave me alone. Go on, complete your mission, since that's all you care about. Get out of here! So once that was done, I only had two trophies left to get. First was the bookworm trophy for collecting all the magazines in the game, which for me, the last one took yet another painful playthrough where I had to stay in the hotel as Kara. But not only did I have to stay in the hotel, I then had to get past all the police and escape undetected to Zlotko's house where I could get the final magazine to unlock the trophy. And then for the final, final trophy before the Platinum, all you have to do is spend some of the points that you accumulate from playing the game in the game's gallery to unlock all the different models and soundtracks and stuff, right? Which is pretty freaking simple because after like four playthroughs, I had more than the 20,000 points that I needed. So I just went in there and started spending all these freaking points. Let's go. Oh, there it is. These are our stories. That's 20,000 points spent, and that means we should have the platinum. <gasps> there it is, boys. Let's go. Detroit Master. Finally, dude. 20 hour platinum that turned into a freaking like nightmare of a game. Let's see. How many hours did it take? 33. It's probably like 35 when I reset everything, but. I won't lie, getting your first platinum trophy feels pretty damn good and I'm looking forward to getting more because hearing the sound and seeing the platinum trophy pop after beating this game and going through four plus playthroughs or whatever I end up having was not something I've got to experience before because the Xbox doesn't have anything like that, right? And I kind of wish it did now. But anyways, that does it for me, guys. If you're a fan of this game, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, definitely let me know down there. But also consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.